welcome back for yet another Next Time Review. Now if you are an observant individual, you may have noticed a minor name change to the channel. I don't know, hearing Get Psyched just really gets me pumped up. Pumped up enough to even go out and get my very own Get Psyched t-shirt. Check it out, pretty sweet stuff. I'm thinking next time I'm gonna have to go with a Get Psyched tracksuit. Anyways, in today's lesson, we will be testing your memory with a few memory experiments. Remember, in the description box, you will find a link that brings you to a worksheet that goes along with this video. Not needed, but it does help. So with all that being said, let's get started. According to psychologists, memory is going to be the mental processes that enable us to retain and retrieve information over time. Now, I have four memory experiments that I'm going to guide you through. Each experiment is going to test a different aspect of your memory. I'm going to explain the purpose of each experiment once we finished up with it. So, are we ready to test our memory? Let's get started with experiment number one. Our first experiment is going to be a simple test of your immediate memory span. I'm going to read off a list of numbers to you, and then when I say go, I want you to try and do your best to recall all of the numbers. We're going to do 10 rounds, starting round one with three numbers. Then with each round, I will add an additional number. So round two will be four numbers, round three will be five numbers, round four will be six numbers. I think you get the point. So are we ready? Let's go. Ready. Go. 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 Go! Alright, so by now you should have all your responses written down. Next I'm going to show you all the letters I just read off so you can check your score. So when the responses pop on screen, just pause the video and take as much time as you need to check your work. To find the capacity for your immediate memory span, you are going to want to start with the question where you first answered incorrectly. Once that's identified, you go to the previous question, count the amount of numbers, and you will get your immediate memory span. So if the first question I got wrong was question number six, I'd go to question number five, count the amount of numbers in that question, and there's my immediate memory span. In this case, it would be seven. So go ahead, pause the video, and see what your immediate memory span capacity is. I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that you scored somewhere in between the five and nine item range. That's because our short-term memory only has the ability to hold about five to nine units of information. In 1956, psychologist George Miller published his study, 
the magic number, seven plus or minus two. Some limits on our capacity for processing information. This publication is one of the highly most cited research in all of psychology. And it explains why, on average, we will score between five to nine items on the experiment we just ran. So yes, our short-term memory is limited. But there are some ways we can improve upon that. Now before we get into that, how about we start with experiment number two. For experiment number two, I'm going to read aloud a list of 15 letters. Now since our memory span only holds about five to nine items, I'm gonna group these letters together in an attempt to help you out of it. I'm gonna read off all the letters, and when it's time for you to recall, I will say go. So make sure you don't start writing until you hear those words. So we ready? Game time. Alright, so here on the board are the letters I just spoke to you. My guess is that it was pretty hard for you to remember all of them. So for part two in this experiment, I am going to reorganize the letters a little bit. Same rules as last time, we're doing the exact same experiment, but this time I'm going to move the letters around a little bit in order to try and create some meaning. So here we go. Now I'm guessing this time you were able to recall all of the letters. So how come the second time around it was much easier for us to remember all the letters? Well, I'm going to let the experts explain this one. Hey George, how about you unleash some knowledge on these kids? Uh, how's it going everyone? George A. Miller here, famous psychologist. No big deal. Everyone loves to source my work. It's just how it is. Anywho, the reason you were all able to remember the words in round two is because of a concept I came up with known as chunking. And I'm not talking about throwing up. <laughs> Oh, anyways, chunking is going to be when you are able to increase the amount of information stored in your short-term memory by grouping related items together into a single unit or chunk. Alright, Stedman, I did what you asked. You better still be Ben when you got hundred dollars. Oh, come on, George, I told you to keep that between us, man. Oh, whatever. Anyways, as Sperling stated, we are able to increase the capacity of our short-term memory when we chunk information together. So in this experiment, instead of being tasked to remember 15 random letters, you were able to chunk them into five meaningful words, making encoding and recall much easier. So speaking of encoding, how about we test out how well we can encode information into our long-term memories? Here in my hand, I have a penny. Now, we have all seen a penny before, so hopefully this memory test is quite easy. I'm about to project an image on the screen that has 15 variations of the penny. One of the pictures will be the correct penny, while the other 14 are slightly changed. It's going to be your job to pick the correct penny out of the lineup. Pretty simple stuff, so here we go. So apparently, not so simple. Now how many of you were able to guess the correct penny on the first trial? Well, I'm going to assume even if you did get it, it was not an easy task. We have all seen pennies thousands of times, so why was it so difficult to pick the right one out of the lineup? Well, this is going to be because of a process known as encoding failure. Encoding failure occurs when we fail to encode the information into our long-term memory in the first place, resulting in issues with remembering specific aspects of the penny. Other annoying things caused by encoding failure can include why we forget someone's name immediately after they introduce themselves to us, as well as forgetting where you parked your car in the mall or school parking lot. Alright, so with that out of the way, how about we move on to our final experiment for memory. For this experiment, I am going to display a list of words on the board. They will be there for 30 seconds. During this 30 seconds, I want you to do your absolute best at remembering every single word. As soon as the words disappear, try and recall as many of the words as you can. We ready? Here we go.
All right, so here's the list of words I just showed you. Now I'm gonna make a couple assumptions on how I think you did. Starting with the word artichoke. I'm going to guess that every single person watching this video was able to recall the word artichoke. This is simply because of its semantic distinctiveness. While all the other terms are related to one another, artichoke is not. My next assumption is going to be that you were easily able to recall the words bed, quilt, rest, and dream due to their location on the list. Items at the beginning and the end of a list are much easier for us to recall than those located in the middle. This is known as the serial position effect. I am also going to assume that you were easily able to recall the word night. It was not a typo on my part when I had the word show up multiple times. Higher frequency will lead to better rehearsal. Now, what about toss and turn? Were you able to recall both of those? If so, this is due to chunking. Tossing and turning is often associated with restless sleep, so recalling one word will help you remember the next, chunking it into one unit. Now, some of you may have even went as far as writing the word sleep down, but you are now noticing that sleep was not on the list. This is a great way to show how we as humans have constructive memories. A constructive memory is going to be an apparent memory of an event that did not actually happen. Your brain unconsciously constructed it to fill in the gaps. The idea of our memory being constructive explains why we sometimes may experience false or imperfect memories. All right, so there you have it, our four memory experiments. Hopefully now you have a little bit of a better idea of how your memory functions. If you did enjoy watching, please feel free to like and subscribe. With each subscription, a lost kitten finds its way home. But more importantly, you will be kept posted on when I post new awesome psych vids. Until next time, peace.